open here, so I'm doing my bit now, and then Sister Lisa will do her bit afterwards. Yes. So please um, let the Holy Spirit be with us as we um, listen to Sister Lisa again. Welcome to each and every one as we listen to Sister Lisa. Amen. Happy Sabbath Church. Happy Sabbath Church. Um, I think I'll take off my glasses so that I won't see anyone. Um, I just want to thank the leadership of the church for allowing me to be the one who's breaking the bread of life. I'm not nervous. <laughs> Because Elder, Elder John came to me and said, I, you look nervous. And he made me nervous. <laughs> and he said to me, okay, let me ask you something so that you won't be nervous. Whatever he asked me, I didn't even hear it. <laughs> because he made me to be nervous. And above all, I wasn't really nervous until... I had, I saw actually my my nieces, so I knew that my brother-in-law is here, <laughs> and I didn't invite them to come and hear me preaching. That was a surprise to me. I knew they were coming to collect the kids and going back. After that, I didn't know that they were still here, and I, they didn't know that I was preaching today. So. I just want to welcome my sister, Siku, and my brother-in-law, Myros, Elder Myros. Um, Elder Myros was my mentor when I was doing my lay preachers, so I'm thinking whether he's got a paper to be marking me. <laughs> so if I'm nervous, it's because he is here. <laughs> But we just want to thank God for being with them, for traveling with them from all the way from Bradford. And I just want to welcome everyone who's here to listen to God speaking to us. Today our message is the harvest is perishing. The harvest is perishing. The scripture reading is already been read. Matthew 9, verse 35 to 38. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we want to thank you this afternoon. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege that we can come and hear from you. Lord, as we open your word, as we hear you speaking to us, Lord, we just want that you open our hearts, open our minds to be receptive to your word. Lord, we are not worthy to be called by your name, yet you call us your, your friends, your servants. Lord, speak to us, we are listening. I pray, Lord, that as I stand in front of your people, may they not see me, but may they see you through me. Father God, may you speak to us, we are listening. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Matthew 9. Verse 35 to 38. Thank you, Lane, for the children's story about harvesting, about farming. I'm not really a I'm not really familiar about farming, but I've got an idea because when I was in in Africa, we used to visit my grandfather who had a farm. Here we call it allotments. Allotments, well, like back home was like a backyard. That's our backyard was as big as your allotment. And we had a farm, a big farm, and then we had a garden. The garden was probably as big as maybe five times all the way from here to the cop if you can say five times, that was the garden. So I know we used to 
visit my grandfather and when is the time for for sowing they will first prepare the land they will just plow without anything and then after that they will look at what is really going around this area is for tomatoes this area is for maize meal this area is for vegetables different types of vegetables and then after when they've selected the land for whichever part of plants they want to plant then they'll do the sowing they'll put the seeds and then then there'll be time for cultivating watering the garden we used to water the garden then uh, the big farm it was through the rain the rain will come and after that there will be the crop growth so we'll be looking at the farm if it was maize meal it would be green my grandfather will go and will look at the farm and will be amazed at looking at the green all the area is green and will be amazed and you'll see my grandfather we used to have a, a stick and he will be going around smiling and saying yes i know the time is coming but i never really used to understand then when it's time for harvesting my grandfather used to have people that were working for him but when it's time for harvesting he will look for more people he will look for more people so when i look at this i'm thinking this is how God saw, Jesus saw, when he said, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So my grandfather would marvel at seeing, the, you know, the field getting ripe, and then he would get more people, and he would pay them after you pay them some would have probably not really money maybe clothes and some would even get it if they were they had to harvest it, 10 buckets of maize they'll get one bucket out of that and this is how we link it with the bible if we are to see lives saved and one to christ we need to see the harvest as Jesus saw the harvest of spiritually lost people dying and facing Christless eternity. How did Jesus see the harvest? Let's go into the Bible, Matthew 9, verse 37. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. The world is big, the crowds are huge. A lot of people are lost and are dying spiritually. Some are dying out there because they don't know that there is God somewhere. The harvest is precious like my grandfather used to see his farm. Precious. Not only was the harvest of people huge for Jesus, but it brought tears in his eyes. Matthew 9, verse 36 tells us that when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. Jesus loves us. Jesus loves us. If he didn't love us, he wouldn't have accepted the task that he did. John 3, verse 16 tells us that for God so loved the world, that he gives his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. So Jesus loves us because he died for us. He died for you and me. And he died for that person who's out there. It says he had compassion. Compassion is the strongest word for pity. It describes the love that moves people to cry for others. 
It is the love that is beyond emotional feeling to heartfelt action. We can say, it's a pity. You know, if I say, it's a pity. You feel the pity. But it's a pity. Oh, it happened. That's a pity. That comes down the heart. Do we have that pity for those who are dying? Jesus grieves for every soul. God grieves because those who die without Christ never know how much he loves them. Jesus saw the harvest as a priority. We need to feel what Jesus feels. We can take a responsibility for our field. Think of the people we can reconduct every day. Our family members, our friends, our neighbors, our work colleagues, do they know that we are even Christians? What do you see when you are at the bus stop? In West Key, in busy traffic, in Shelley High Street, as you pass the other crowds on the streets, do you see the lost? God blesses great value on the lost. That's the reason he came to the world. We can pray for the harvest when we begin to see as Jesus saw the people. Then we will pray for the harvest. For the lost people. We we'll pray for the church. We we'll pray for the reapers. We we'll pray for men and women to go into the harvest. Jesus saw the harvest perplexed. The harvest is perplexed. There is confusion. There is confusion all over. Even in this country, there is confusion. People are looking for answers. Everyone wants to know what really is going on. Are we, are we confused just like them? Are we there to promote confusion? Matthew 9 verse 36, Jesus described the crowd as being harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Harassed meaning defeated by life. Trials and struggles coming to people. The people are ready to quit. They are helpless, meaning they were broken and without purpose. They are wandering aimlessly. People without hope, without meaning, without reason for living. Even nowadays you can meet people who say, I don't even know why I'm living. I don't know why I'm here. People are perishing. <coughs> like the sheep without a shepherd. That meant they can follow anything. They can follow any new ideas, even if they, it leads to destruction. The sheep follow the sheep in front of them. If there is no sheep, they wander and wander until death. This is described even in today's society. People are harassed, they are helpless, without a shepherd. People are living in desperate lives. They want answers. They are walking a path that leads to death, the broad road. Proverbs 29 verse 18 says, we need, they, where there is, a, there is no vision, the people perish. We need to have a vision. Do we have a vision for the lost? The world is perishing. 
the harvest is perishing. John 4 verse 35 says, Open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe and ready for harvest. There is always urgency in bringing the harvest. We are living in desperate times. We are living in a time when young people kill each other. Teenagers revenge on other teenagers. People still cheat, kill, because they want to do it their own way. We live in a lost and broken world that is desperate for gospel. That is only good news of Jesus Christ. Um, on Monday, our neighbor back in Zimbabwe passed away. What a tragedy. People have been passing away. It's never been mentioned. It was my neighbor. The son went to South Africa and for some time. He went back to Zimbabwe. He wanted answers. He didn't know what was happening. He was working, but he couldn't see what he was working for. He went back home. He was troubled. Then on Monday, after 4 p.m., he locked the house and went to his auntie. Gave the auntie the keys and said, Mom wants to see you. The mom is confused. If your mom is in the house, why the keys? Then, but the boy left without telling the auntie what really was happening. The young man is 25. The mom was 52. The auntie went to the house. She knocked. She opened because she's got the keys. When she got in, the house was in a mess. There was cutlery, pots, everything that you can find from the kitchen. Except for the knives, there were no knives, but other things were there. The house was in a messy. He found there was a, she found that there was a duke, you know, the, the lady's duke, on the side of the sofa. On the other side, there was a body lying there. That was that mom's, that mom for that son who gave the auntie the kiss. The boy had killed his mother. He is now in prison. The mom is going to be buried tomorrow. We live in a lost and broken world that is desperate for good news of Jesus Christ. We can share a story. <clears throat> the great sin that we have as a church is the sin of silence. People mourn because it's too hot. We mourn with them. It's too hot. I can't stand this heat. People mourn because it's raining. We mourn with them. I can't stand the rain. When other people are crying because they want the rain. You can tell somebody that, yes, we need the rain. In this country, there is no rain for two months. They declare drought. We have taken the Great Commission and made it the Great Omission. May the Lord help us.
died for us. On the cross, on the cross, he died for us. For you and me and for that person out there. I hope our hearts will be stirred up to make the difference in the harvest. You see, we begin to see people as Jesus saw them. And make it that we make a difference in the world, in Southampton. We are to see people as Jesus saw them. It will cause us to take responsibility to pray, to go and tell about Jesus. Maybe someone is thinking, yes, it's about people out there. Then, what does it do to me? Because now, we say, as for me and my house. But the Lord has said, go and tell. There are qualities there is a qualification for spiritual farmers. You don't really need to go to university for this qualification. Usually, I'm glad Anglin Daba is not here because I don't think he was going to be happy to hear when I say farmers usually are uneducated people. I'm sorry for the farmers we have brought their lovely, lovely crops, crops and everything, fruits, because usually the farmers are not educated, but they know to start and finish and get the harvest. The qualification is our great employer is God and is looking for the best potential workers. He is looking for the people who can possess these qualities. Passion for the lost. Do you have a passion for the lost? People are disciplined. He has a call. He, the, that person has a call and a man of prayer and fasting. Are you able to see somebody at the bus stop and be able to pray and fast for them, even if you don't know their names? Caring people. God cares about people. Each lost person that is, is found receives a heavenly party. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care for them. Proverbs 29 verse, verse 18. If you can read Proverbs 29 verse 18. Proverbs 29 verse 18 says, where there is no revelation, the people are cast off restraint, but happy is who that keeps the law. The other version says, where there is no vision, people perish. As a church, if you don't have a vision, people will perish. We are perishing in later on the out. We are coming here every Sabbath. We sing, we pray, we go home. And that's a routine. God needs people with patience, those who never give up. Luke 18 verse one says, he told the disciples that they ought to pray and never give up. Never give up on that person who is giving up for themselves. He needs people who study. Study for spiritual growth and for the church growth. You know, sometimes even in our churches, there's a lot that goes on. People argue. People hate each other. And that brings the church down. But it's because we're not studying. God needs people with time, who gives time priority to time, to winning souls. God needs people who are committed to work for him. As 
is we are bringing our foods for those who, who didn't get them from Africa, from Tesco, and for those who, who got them from their allotment. I'm sure you didn't bring just like just any other fruits or any other crops, vegetables. You got the best ones because it's harvest day. This is the special time. Um, in my previous church, we used to, you know, after the this the, the harvest day, we we'll get me. Yeah, I'll we'll get what I didn't bring. Someone, I'll get from, from someone because they chose the best. And where am I coming from? Jesus is coming, brothers and sisters. And when He is coming, He's coming for the best. He's not going to take any other people who haven't done well. He's coming to take those who have obeyed Him, who have obeyed His law. Have you obeyed His law? Are you the best one? It is my prayer that we pray for the harvest. We pray for ourselves. We pray for the Holy Spirit to lead us to be able to even call those people to come and rejoice with us as we are waiting for the second coming of Jesus. May the Lord help us as we ponder this message. Because he is coming soon. And when he is coming, I want to be found in that number. I want to be found in that number. I don't know about you. And I don't know why we would waste time and not do what other people are doing. Jesus ministered to the blind man who saw men as walking trees. Another touch from Jesus restored his sight.